Hello members of The Big Little, my name is Sally, I'm the founder of Women With Sparkle, I'm a women's holistic nutritionist and coach and I help women fix their hormones, their health and their happiness and I'm here exclusively with you today to give you my five top tips on how you can balance your hormones so you can feel your best ever. But before we do that, let's just take a moment for my earrings. Okay. So the reason we need to care about our hormones and what they're doing is because they control so much of how we feel. They control our mood, our appetite, our sex drive, our energy, all the things that might be going a little bit haywire for you at the minute. So once we learn what's throwing them off, bringing them back into balance, we can start living the life we were meant to and sparkle a little bit more. The biggest piece of hormone balancing knowledge I'm going to give you today is this you are not a man and by that I mean you don't have a male hormonal cycle so the male hormonal cycle is 24 hours the female hormonal cycle is 28 days or thereabouts what that means is within those 28 days or however long your cycle is you have four different phases Within those four different phases, you have different levels of hormones that dictate your energy, your mood, your sex drive, your appetite. So all those things are going to shift over a month. And if you don't understand when those shifts are happening, and if you try and live like a man, which most of us are forced to do, where our productivity, our happiness, our horniness is meant to be the same every day, we can do some real damage to our own health and hormones, mental and physical health, because we're not understanding what our body needs in each phase. So one of the best things you can do is download an app. The one I use is called MyFlow, M-Y-F-L-O. And I track the phases of my cycle and I work out where I am. And so within that, I try and adjust my diet and my lifestyle to the energy I know I'm going to have, the food I need, and all those things are going to help support your hormones. So when we stop trying to live like a man and stop trying to be the same thing and have the same, do the same level of exercise or eat the same types of food every day, you really are going to nourish, nourish your mind and your body and your spirit and your hormones are going to feel amazing instead of a complete mess. So the second thing we want to do to have happier hormones is add some things into our diet. We want to be drinking more water because that will help flush out excess hormones that we don't want in us that can make us feel really, really crappy and imbalance our hormones. We want to be eating more fruits and veg. We want to be aiming for about seven portions of veg, three portions of fruit a day. Look, I know that can seem a lot, but start your day with a green smoothie. It's one of the best ways to pack in those nutrients and help your hormones before you think of doing anything else and you there's veggies you can put in there that won't taste disgusting i promise if you put a courgette into a smoothie it actually makes it taste quite creamy you can put spinach in and if that's a little bit too green tasting for you you can add either some mango or some pineapples to sweeten it up but the reason we want all this fruit and veg in our diet is because it's anti-inflammatory and inflammation in our bodies is one of the biggest things that throws off our hormones. Essentially what inflammation does, if your hormones are like little messengers, they send messages to your organs to tell them what to do and what to produce. Inflammation is basically like a big drunk dinner party guest getting in the way of those messages. So we don't want that, we want those hormonal messages without being interrupted to get to our organs to tell our organs what to do so we can have happy healthy bodies so the way we bring that inflammation down is by eating anti-inflammatory foods fruit and vegetables are the best and there was even a study that proved if you were having a really really crappy diet so they took the example of the traditional american diet so someone was having pancakes for breakfast with bacon pizza for lunch burgers for dinner they measured, measured the inflammation in their bodies and after each of those meals, as expected, the inflammation went up. They then did another trial where they used the same meal, the same people, but what they did is they just added one portion of anti-inflammatory foods into 
the meal. So in this case, it was strawberries. So they had their pancakes for breakfast with bacon. The inflammation went up. They ate their cup of strawberries and they saw that the inflammation came down. Same happened with lunch, same happened with dinner. So this is the actual science of what adding more fruits and vegetables into your diet can do. So if you have a bit of a crappy diet, at least add those things in. And if you have a better diet, not only will those things just bring the inflammation down, but if your inflammation is already low, it will then start repairing and healing all the other bits of your bodies that it needs to. So it's really amazing and really important we have those fruits and veggies in our diet. The other thing we want to concentrate on is greens. The more greens we can get in our diet, the better, because that helps our liver detoxify excess hormones. And it's the excess hormones, namely estrogen, that throws women off balance and produces everything from heavy periods, PMS, adult acne, hot flashes. So all those things we want to reduce. So your fruit, your veggies, concentrate on your greens. Your hormones will love you for it. So those are the brilliant things we want to add into our diet. And we always want to concentrate on bringing things in rather than always concentrating on banning things from our diet. Because I think women have had a lifetime of being told what we can't have in our diet. However, knowledge is power. So what we have to understand is the things that throw our hormones off and cause inflammation in our body. Some of the biggest culprits, don't boo me, are sugar, dairy, alcohol, I know there are many of our comfort blankets and our things that we love, but we have to know that these things increase inflammation in our body, throw off our hormones, and so give us lots of the symptoms that we don't want. The heavy periods, the PMS, the adult acne, the mood swings. If we can reduce those things, if we can swap them with something else, if you can have a kombucha one night instead of a wine, if you can have something sweet in your life, get someone to give you a massage instead of having that big bit of cake. I'm happy for you to have the cake, but we're just saying not every day and not huge, huge amounts of sugar because sugar will throw off your hormones and we are trying to bring them back into balance. But like I said, go back to point two, concentrate on bringing all those things in because that will help reduce the inflammation anyway. But we have to know that the sugar, the alcohol and dairy as well will throw your hormones off. The reason dairy does is dairy is produced by mummy cows. And the reason for that milk is to grow a baby cow into a big whopping cow. It's loaded with estrogen. It's loaded with growth hormones. And so if you're struggling with weight and skin and hormonal issues, we don't want any of that excess cow hormone in us. Okay, we want happier hormones. This is something we have to take really seriously. We have to, have to, have to find ways to reduce our stress levels. From about our mid thirties, women's stress tends to increase. Many women have young children, careers, businesses, trying to deal with partners, in-laws, aging parents, trying to deal with the stress of being a woman who's aging, all those things throw off our hormones and really can cause some devastating symptoms. So your stress is one of the things you want to reduce. I know chance would be a fine thing, right? But just look for the smallest ways. Bringing in some movement, some exercise will help decrease your stress. Taking the smallest nap, I'm talking about six to 12 minutes, can actually help reduce your stress levels. Learn breathing techniques. Find the thing that works for you. It's going to be different for everyone, but you have to take stress seriously. We can't keep wearing it as a badge of honour or something that just women have because it's really harming our mental and physical health and it does untold damage to your hormones and causes horrible symptoms, none of which I want you to have. So like I said, if you can look into some small ways you can look to reduce your stress levels, ask for more help. Us women are really, really bad at that. And one other thing you can do is you can add in adaptogens. They are supplements that help basically absorb stress and stop them throwing off your hormones. Now, you don't want to just take them instead of addressing the areas, but they're a really good thing that can support you. The adaptogen that I recommend to most of my clients is called ashwagandha. And you want to get it from a really reputable company and make sure it's a food-based supplement. My final tip to help balance your hormones is speak your truth. 
I know this seems like a really weird one to put in here, but let me tell you that women carry on and they stop speaking about how they're really feeling. We get into moods, we get into rages, and all those things are actually just signals that our body is asking that we change some things in our lives. But instead of having those sometimes difficult conversations or annoying conversations or asking someone for the 10th time to do something that we need them to do, we tend to push it in. That causes huge stress to our body. We know that stress throws off our hormones and we don't want our hormones thrown off. So start speaking your truth. If you're not able to have those conversations, start by writing letters. Really good way to just get it out your system rather than keep it in and throw off your hormones. Tell people where you need extra help. Tell people where you're really struggling. Tell people some things you'd love to include in your life or where you're feeling forgotten or a bit down or a bit anxious. Get those feelings out. Confide in partners or friends or families or a professional. But that speaking of your truth really does release stress and cause an amazing cascade of feel-good hormones to flood your body and help balance your hormones. We want you to feel your best ever. So try one, two, three, four, or all five of those tips because I know they will help you. And if you have any questions about any of them, then feel free to contact me. You can go to at Women With Sparkle on Instagram, or you can go to my website, womenwithsparkle.com. Lovely ladies from The Big Little, I will see you soon. And thanks so much for listening today. And I really hope that you will have some healthy, happy hormones moving forward.